the front. I'm going to kind of scrape off that little edge a little bit and I'm going to twist the top close. I'm going to go ahead and pick up this cake, set it down. So to do this, I'm going to put the flat edge on the outside and I'm going to have it out to the edge. It's probably going to be sitting out at about a 40 degree angle. And I'm going to take my turntable and I'm going to squeeze and just kind of turn the table as I go. And get that nice band on there. The little areas that, have, that you have gaps on there, you can just go ahead and refill in with some more squeezed out frosting. Every once in a while, push some of it down. And again, squeeze it all the way going around. Nice fluid mo movements. I always like to take my turntable and go all the way around and turn in one smooth motion. That way you don't get the little stop and go, stop and go, stop and go. For the top of it, you can also use your bag technique, where you just kind of spin around and get that nice edge there. And then just squeeze out the rest of the frosting. And scrape that off, set that off to the side. So I like to use my bench knife for this. Gets a nice clean edge. You can also get a frosting smoother bench knife. I mean, I personally like to hold them better. Gives a nice little grip going on. And you're just gonna help push it to the edge about, again, about probably about a 30 degree angle. And very gently, you're just gonna slide it across the edges of the cake. And to, when doing this, you're gonna be pulling some of the frosting off of the cake, just like that. You're gonna be kind of pulling off quite a bit. And you're just gonna wanna every once in a while just kinda like scrape it clean. And again, when I said that we use it in one fluid move movement, you get the nice, smooth edges, clean, sharp, less bubbles. If your arms aren't quite long enough, you can always do it in short bursts where you just kind of keep turning it. And at the end, you're going to have that little seam, but that's just going to be your back. And to flatten out the edge, I like to just kind of Twirl it, scrape off quite a bit of that. And when I twirl it, I'm usually again about 30, 40 degree angles away from the edge of the cake. I'm just kind of folding those sides back in. And you're gonna kind of start to get a little bit of a lip. I'm gonna go back through and find that back seam again, and I'm gonna start from there and again, taking one fluid movement, just kind of lightly pressing into the cake, swirling it around. And then again, I've got those little ridges. I'm just going to fold those back into the top of the cake. I personally like to have really clean boards. It gives it a more professional look and it get, makes it look cleaner and just, just nicer to grab onto. So you can kind of see that there's a little bit of frosting around the edges. What you can do is you can just take your bench knife and just press down hard and just scrape it off. And just kind of turn as you go, slowly scraping it off. It gives you a nice clean board. It makes it nice and good. I was going to kind of go over more on how to do borders. I'm going to go ahead and take my frosting bag again that has the star border or star tip and what you're going to do is you're going to put it on the edge there and you're going to squeeze, stop, pull. And you're going to kind of want to make sure that it's like pushing into itself kind of like folding over in like that kind of motion. I'll do that one and finish that one up in a moment. And you're just going to kind of slowly turn it. Whoops! Every once in a while you get a little bag burp. That's okay. Just kind of smooth it out and continue going. And you're just going to keep slowly turning the board around as you keep plugging more frosting around. This does take a lot of practice. When I first started decorating, I was very against doing borders. I didn't like doing them. I thought it looked better without them. It was very stubborn. My uh, cake decorating teacher told me I was wrong. I ignored her. I love you, Rayanne. Thank you so much for teaching me the correct way to do this. And I'm just going to kind of keep doing that top border and keep smoothing it around. 
I don't always do top borders because again, I'm stubborn, but I always do bottom borders. The nice thing about bottom borders is it keeps holding the cake in place. It doesn't let the cake slide around, it glues it into place. And voila, there is that. And I'm just gonna kind of squeeze that extra frosting back into my bowl. Now I'm gonna go ahead and go grab, mm, yummy frosting. I'm gonna go ahead and go grab some of my real flowers. I got some, I got these from Whole Foods, just from my local Whole Foods. And it's really nice because the nice thing about Whole Foods flowers is I don't really need to do anything with them. I don't need to like wrap them in saran wrap or tin foil or anything. I can just go ahead and put them directly onto the cake because it's all organic. So I'm gonna go grab those and I'll be right back. All right, so I have a different, different couple types of flowers. I've got these really big ones. I don't even actually really know what they are, but they're really pretty. I thought they were fun looking. And I'm just gonna kind of set these in here and just kind of lightly press them into the cake probably should dry them off a little bit. I do have them soaking in some water. I got them a couple days ago, so nothing too harmful. As I said, I did get these from Whole Foods, so you don't really need to do anything with them. If you did feel a little uncomfortable putting in just like straight flowers onto a cake, you can always just take some saran wrap and just kind of wrap them around and then just kind of gently just place them in the frosting. I think we're going to go with one more of these big ones. Maybe not that one. Maybe not. We'll just stick with those two. And now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take my scissors and I'm going to kind of prick off some of these little ones. And just kind of decorate, fill in the space and decorate it up a little bit. I do love these the whites and the reds. They're really pretty together. Christmassy colors. And you can really just kind of shove those into the cake really well. Let's see, ooh, this one's pretty. Got a green spider mum. I'm probably gonna keep most of that stem going there. That way I can kind of give it some height. Good way to also build height in there is you can do like a little mound of frosting to kind of put the, the flowers into. Get a nice height in there because you don't want to have a nice flat cake. That's boring. You want to have nice levels and different textures and designs. And you know, that's looking pretty full. And I'm actually really that. So yeah, that is my personal little birthday cake. Yay, happy birthday to me. And again, this is a chocolate cake with some caramel buttercream with fresh flowers from Whole Foods. And my name is Brianna and this is White Oat Goodies. Thank you so much for watching and please don't forget to subscribe. Thank you so much.